China's foreign minister Wang Yi summed up the country's diplomacy last year by saying that its most distinct feature is its enterprising and innovative spirit. Wang said that 2013 was not just a successful year for the country's new leaders, but also a year of innovation and harvest for China's diplomacy. Last year, President Xi Jinping and Premier Li Keqiang visited 22 countries, received 65 foreign heads of state and government in China, and met more than 300 foreign dignitaries, while the country reached about 800 agreements with other countries. Well, we have talked about the highlights and some breakthroughs mm. in the past year of the China's diplomacy. And Foreign Minister Wang Yi used to said at a symposium last year that while carrying forward uh, the traditions, Chinese new leadership under President Xi Jinping has made uh, plan ahead, has plan ahead and blazed new trails mm -hmm. and have courageously uh, fulfilled its responsibilities and act with innovation. Mm -hmm. So what are the new trails and innovation that the Prime Minister was referring to here? You know, uh, you can read from the Foreign Minister Wang Yi's statement two things. One is continuity. China's, China sticks to the, I mean, peaceful development strategy. This is, uh, China has been always doing that. This is continuity. Another side is uh, breakthrough, innovation. Innovation. Look, if you look at the past year, President Xi Jinping and uh, Premier Li Keqiang were quite dynamic. They were most everywhere. Uh, they, were, they had uh, good meetings with uh, leaders of big powers. They have uh, had good meetings with uh, neighboring countries' leaders. They were quite dynamic at uh, multilateral diplomacy for so many meetings. Then they went to Africa, Latin America, and uh, Asia. You see, these, the developing world today is very important for China because China is also a re developing uh, country. The developing world, quite a few countries of the developing world are rising. They are emerging countries. So we, China is also an emerging country. We share a lot of common ground. So President Xi Jinping and Premier Li Keqiang attaches great importance to the relations, to the cooperation with the developing world. You see, China's foreign policy has a comprehensive, uh, holistic foreign policy because China has come to the center stage of the uh, global scene. Yes. Chinese President Xi Jinping reached a consensus with U.S. President Barack Obama to build a new type of China-U.S. relationship during his visit to the U.S. in June 2013. According to the Chinese president, the new type of China-U.S. relationship features no conflict or confrontation, but mutual respect and win-win cooperation. China's foreign minister Wang Yi said that this shows China's sense of responsibility for the international community. Looking back, what do you think have been the highlights in terms of China's diplomacy? Mm -hmm. Then, in, in Sunnyland, California, two leaders agreed to build a new model of big power relationship. This is quite new. Because in the past, rising power and the established power, they were almost bound to engage on head-on confrontation. Mm -hmm. But President Xi Jinping and President Obama agreed to have a new model of big power relationship. What does it mean? President Xi Jinping said it means three things. No conflict, no confrontation. Two, mutual res respect. Three, win-win cooperation. I think no conflict, no confrontation, that's bottom line. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Means we will not we repeat the past head-on confrontation between established power and uh, rising power. Mutual respect, 
That's the basis for the cooperation. Win-win cooperation. This is the most important part. That will advance bilateral relationship. This is new. I think in the past, if you you look at uh, history, I think established power and、uh, rising power, they never agreed to have that kind of relationship. This is a breakthrough.、Uh, I think history will tell tell us this is a very、uh, important meeting. I mean, we the two leaders has broken fresh ground and open new chapter between. Uh, China and U.S. in terms of bilateral relationship, this is,、uh, I think, is a very important highlight. Then, how do you think we should continue to build this new type of major power relations、mm-hmm. in the future? How to advance this new model of big power relationship between China and U.S.? I think the most important thing is action. What kind of action? To my understanding, America has its interests. China, we have our interests. However, in quite a few areas, China's interests and the U.S. interests converge. I believe we have to first to identify converging interests. Then, on the basis of the converging interests, let's、uh, develop projects of cooperation to expand common interests and、uh, to build. Communities of interests. In that way, we were in the position to deepen, deepen interdependence between China and the U.S. Then the foundation of China-U.S. relationship will grow stronger and stronger. With that, I mean, in mind, I'm sure we are we will be in a better position to. Deal with the differences between China and the United States. Premier Li Keqiang said in his government work report delivered at the parliamentary session this year that China will promote long-term stability with other major countries. To some extent, Sino-Russia relations have been a model for this new type of major country relations. What do you think of the、uh, Sino-U.S. sorry Sino-Russia relations? How it will be developing、mm-hmm. in the near future? I think the China-Russia relations are in very good shape. Relations have been growing rapidly after in the aftermath of President Xi Jinping's visit to Russia last year. You know, President Putin and President Xi Jinping they talked to each other from time to time by phone,、uh, and when you can judge from picture, the two men that meet they met each other. They, they, I, I. My feeling is the two men. They really the chemistry between two men is pretty good, and two leaders understand each other. Certainly, it's a, it's a, it's a very good thing for the bilateral、uh, cooperation. Chinese economy and the Russia economy are highly complementary. Complementary. You see, Russia is、uh, very rich in resources. China's、uh, resource poor country, then we can import resources from Russia, and we can export a lot of things to 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 Russia, and we 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 benefit also from this、uh, bilateral cooperation. So I believe in the coming years, China Russia cooperation will move、uh, forward. I mean rapidly. China has long maintained that it pursues a foreign policy of building friendships and partnerships with its neighboring countries. At a conference on diplomatic work in Beijing in October 2013, President Xi Jinping proposed guidelines for neighborhood diplomacy featuring amicability, sincerity, mutual benefit, and inclusiveness. Wang Yi said that the guidelines demonstrate China's sincerity and goodwill to neighboring countries and its readiness to work with them to build a community with a common destiny. China has been expanding economic cooperation with its neighbors. It has proposed the setting up of a Silk Road economic belt through Central Asia and the 21st century maritime Silk Road linking China, Bangladesh, India, and Myanmar.
an infrastructure investment bank to finance construction projects in Asia and to upgrade a free trade agreement with Southeast Asian countries. Uh, last year, October 24 and 25, Xi Jinping conveyed a very important meeting on, uh, on the relations between China and her neighboring countries. This is, uh, I mean, all the members of the Standing Committee of Political Bureau attend this uh, important conference. This is uh, for the first time in the history of the People's Republic of China. Because as I, as a diplomat, I, I know quite well. In past, we never had, have had that kind of conference. But why, October last year, uh, President Xi Jinping thought it was necessary to have such a meeting? I think the message we like to get across to the world is China attaches great importance to the her relationship with the neighboring countries, because our region is the most dynamic region in the world, economically. I mean, for, for several decades, this is the most dynamic, most vibrant region in the world. China's relations with these countries kept growing rapidly on a win-win basis. Now we, we believe we have to to move forward along this path. I mean, we have to advance much more our cooperation with our neighboring countries. Wang Yi said that China will seek justice and uphold equality in international relations and protect the rights of developing countries in particular. He said the country will work to push the international order toward a more fair and reasonable direction. Wang vowed that China will take an active role in international and regional affairs and play a bigger part in solving global and regional issues by offering China's own solutions. How would China's diplomacy um, be heading to just to be in line with the overall development plan mm -hmm. of the country? To develop Chinese economy, what does China need? Stability at home and the peace abroad. We need a stable, peaceful, develop, uh, peaceful environment to develop Chinese economy. That's why you, 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 can, you, can, you can read it, I mean, see that in the report of Premier Li Keqiang. He said this year mark, marks 60th anniversary of five principles of peaceful coexistence. China was uh, one of the initiators of these five principles. Means five, five principles mean what? First, uh, mutual respect for sovereignty and the territorial integrity. Two, mutual non-aggression. Uh, three, uh, mutual non-interference into each other's domestic affairs. Fourth, mutual benefit. Fifth, peaceful coexistence. You can, these five principles are crucial to develop, I mean, healthy relationship with other countries. You respect other sovereignty, territorial integrity. You don't want to interfere into domestic affairs of other country. You don't want to commit aggression as, against others. You respect each other. You develop cooperation and mutual benefit. Of course, relation will move forward. Means what? These, these five prin principles are cardinal principles for China's foreign policy. When China deals with other countries, China will follow these five principles. This is CNC World, a new perspective.